Uh, good morning. My name is Nikos Vlahos. I am uh, a, degree, a master's degree candidate from the Department of Pharmacy of the University of Patras. I am presenting our results about um, the correlation between the uh, aldehyde emission levels uh, with uh, the illiquid flavors used, the resistance temperature levels, and the aging of the resistance in e-cigarettes. Carbonyl compounds have been detected in the vapor of e-cigarettes. Uh, this attracted the scientific community's attention as there was a need to estimate the risks involved in the use of these devices. The first uh, results were comforting since it was found that high carb carbonyl emissions were only observed using high power settings in newer generation devices. These so-called dry puff conditions though produced uh, an unpleasant taste Making, making it easier for the vapor to avoid. Besides the power level of the device, uh, the aging of the resistance seemed to play an important role in the uh, carbonyl emissions that were observed. And finally, one mo another interesting find was uh, the fact that the flavoring compounds in e-liquids seem to be the major contributors of aldehyde emissions. The objectives set were to observe the aldehyde emissions from a base mixture uh, in different voltage settings uh, and points of the resistance aging. High voltage settings are known to produce higher temperatures uh, on the heating coil of an e-cigarette and also to study the impact of flavoring compounds in the aldehyde emission levels. Uh, that's the protocol we used. We used a VTC e-cigarette mod and a Nautilus 2 atomizer. Uh, the Nautilus 2 atomizer was filled with two mLs of um, e-liquid before the production of each sample. Um, you can see our setting on the photo. The vapor was, I think I'm gonna use the. Uh, the vapor was produced by the e-cigarette and it was trapped in two inline connected impinger vials filled each with 35 ml of DMPH solution. After that, uh, 30 puffs were executed, executed uh, which consisted a sample. Each puff lasting three seconds uh, and uh, executed in three second intervals. Uh, afterwards, uh, the gravitation period followed which was 30 minutes and the sample was then collected and analyzed. Let's move on to our results. In the first set of our experiments, we collected uh, samples from different voltage settings using the same resistance until we observed a sudden raise, uh, rise of aldehyde emission levels. The liquid we used was a mixture of ba a base mixture of propylene glycerol and vegetable glycerin, 50 to 50% ratio. The reason we conducted the test at different uh, voltage settings was to uh, test the aging of the resistance at different temperature levels. Uh, in the next slides, you will see some graphs on the, uh, on the X axis. You will see the numbers of samples we produced. Again, each sample consisting of 30 puffs. And on the Y axis, you will see the emission levels that we observed. At 3.7 volts, uh, in the beginning, we see that the emission levels start quite low. Up until the point of one, around 1,000 puffs, when formaldehyde and acetaldehyde emission levels start to rise. And uh, after around 1,500 puffs, when the same happens for acrolein and crotonaldehyde. Uh, at 4.3 volts, uh, we can see a lot of similarities. Again, uh, the formaldehyde and acetaldehyde uh, emissions start to rise after approximately 1,000 puffs, and the acrolein crotonaldehyde after around 1,500. Um, again, as I said, we can see a lot of similarities between these two graphs, and we believe um, that the reason is, the, is maybe the fact that the temperature of 4.3 isn't that much higher than 3.7 to produce the dry puff phenomenon. A completely different picture though at five volts. Um, 
we can see that uh, formaldehyde and acetaldehyde um, emissions start to rise only after 90 puffs, and the acrolein and crotonaldehyde after 150. This is 10 times earlier than the previous two power settings. So, um, what we observed was that high resistance temperatures resulted in raised aldehyde emissions much sooner. Also, higher voltage settings seem to impact more on the aging of the resistance. And again, we observed pretty much what we saw for, from the pre-existing data, that resistance aging is, seems to be an important factor determining the aldehyde levels produced. In the next set of our experiments, um, we tested the aldehyde emission levels produced by different flavoring compounds used in e-liquids. We used commercially bought uh, e-liquids. Um, we used three sets of flavors. We used three fruit flavors, three um, sweet flavors, and three tobacco flavors. We also set the device at 3.7 volts since uh, we observed that that was the point where the lowest emissions were uh, exhibited. For formaldehyde, uh, the highest emissions were observed by chocolate mousse, a sweet flavor, and the lowest by cherry lips and cigarillo, a fruit and a tobacco flavor. Again, I must point out the emissions of cinnamon cookie, also a sweet flavor. For acetaldehyde, uh, the highest emission levels were observed by cinnamon cookie, again a sweet flavor, and the lowest by forest fruits, a fruit flavor. Now about the crawling, the highest emission levels were observed by cinnamon cookie and to a lesser extent by creme brulee and max blend. The rest of the flavors exhibited pretty much emissions on the same level, but uh, the lowest emissions were observed by cigarillo, a tobacco flavor. And now for the first time, the crotonaldehyde's highest emission level was uh, a tobacco flavor. And the lowest by cherry lips and strawberry, two fruit flavors, and cinnamon cookie, a sweet flavor. In general, what we observed was that um, sweet flavors observed the highest amounts of aldehydes, with the exception of crotonaldehyde, which was exhibited by a tobacco flavor. Besides that, tobacco and fruit flavors seem to exhibit the lowest uh, emissions. Uh, it must be mentioned the, in, the intense variations that were observed between flavors within even the same category. And one example is crotonaldehyde, when the highest and almost the lowest emissions were observed by a tobacco flavor, Max Blend and Prince. If we consider uh, our results, we might think that these uh, emissions are pretty high. But uh, the highest emission values that we have uh, observed in our experiments were 90 to 550 times lower than the ones observed in conventional cigarettes. Uh, we believe that this type of data uh, is very important for the everyday consumer of, of electronic cigarette products and uh, we would like to produce more of that kind in the future. Uh, I would like to thank our uh, colleagues and um, the members of our lab for the guidance and their assistance, and I would also like to thank you for your attention.